Good evening, YouTube world. Ed Kirkpatrick. Thanks for stopping by for another episode of This Old Gun. Yeah. Seemed like a few people liked it, so we'll keep on putting them out. Somebody says, no, we can't do it no more. But anyhow, uh, apologize for the scruffy look here. I, it's hunting season, and well, if I ain't in the woods or cooking, uh, yeah, it's pretty much what everything's doing <clears throat> nowadays. Uh, tonight, I'd like to talk to you about the 44 Magnum. Uh, it was a cartridge that was introduced, invented in around 1954-55. The man responsible for its development was an old-timer named Elmer Keefe. I believe he was a Texas Border Patrol agent for years and ended up being a gun writer for the sports magazines back in those days. And <clears throat> he only had the 44 Russian and the 44 Special. And he thought the 44 Special could uh capable of producing more energy. In other words, putting more of a walk down range. And he's a big handgun hunter. <clears throat> and so he went to working on stretching. 44 special case and at that time you had some new powders coming out especially DuPont 55 you got to remember it was uh, knee deep in the Korean War I believe and anyway these companies were developed new and uh, more explosive powders for guns so Elmer teamed up with Smith and Wesson and uh, developed the 44 Magnum 44 Magnum kind of got his fame by Dirty Harry movie, you know, Make My Day. <clears throat> That's what he was shooting. The Smith & Wesson Model 29. 44 Magnum. <clears throat> so once that got introduced in 55 and a few test uh, production type models were made by Smith & Wesson, Old Man Ruger, who I'm, uh, I knew at one time. He's, he's, he's passed on. Uh, Bill Ruger, he, he decided he'd jump on the bandwagon too. So he took his single six model, little 22 he made off the Colt action, the 1880s Colt action gun, and decided he'd make a 44 Magnum. And what he made was the Ruger Blackhawk. <clears throat> and that's what we have here today. Now, this one was made in 1957. This is a Ruger Blackhawk and 44 Magnum. And as you can see here, I can point, it's got the three screws, which means it was based on the Colt action. And the way you can tell a pistol if it's got the Colt action is when you click the hammer back, it should make four clicks, C-O-L-T. There you go. Now it's ready to fire. When Colt made the gun, <clears throat> I'll show you something a little different. Colt put a spur right here on the hammer that came out, a little, a little piece of metal. And when the hammer failed and went through a little hole, hit the cartridge and fired. Well, Bill Ruger did it just a little bit different. He didn't put a spur right here because... The army complained about the spurs being broke in battle. <clears throat> if a gun got hit or got out of time, it would break the spur off and the gun's useless. So Bill put a little, oh, uh, if you can see that right there. Uh, it's a little, a little hammer, I mean a little button that was the firing pin. Should have got me a little pencil here, but you maybe see that little thing, a little button in there. Anyway, the hammer, would, this hat, flat hammer would drop, hit that little button. That would push the firing pin forward to hit the primer in the round to make it fire. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> this gun, uh oh, sorry. This gun is all steel except the loading gate. It's aluminum. The grip handle is aluminum. And the trigger housing is aluminum. Later on, the unloading tube 
was made out of aluminum, but for right now, this was still steel. Just for those who want to know. Another thing, people get into these type of guns and get, oh, this is there, this is neat. Well, this is also what's called a flat top ruber. You'll notice the top across here is flat. Okay? And I'll show you a little difference later. Another thing that was unique about the gun at that time was the cylinder. Let's see if I can get some light over here and show you. Now, the cylinder is counterboard. I don't know if that will really do you any justice or not. But the cylinder <clears throat> it's got a counterbore in it so that when the bullet goes into the cylinder here it sets flush okay maybe I can figure out a way to show that a little better here but anyway that gives you a cleaner line right here than you do in today's modern guns and then here you've got the forcing cone as you can see it's very tight just to give you an example let me pull out a modern day black oak <clears throat> modern-day Blackhawk two buttons there's no three screws if you will look you can see a rather large gap right here see that's because the shell sits on the outside of the cylinder wall anyway probably a mute point for some but for some people with a fixer not those that is the Cadillac thing to have Anyway, as you can tell, this is not a flat top. You see, it's got the hump. And the loading gate tube is aluminum. Pretty much the same gun other than the safety mechanism. Now, this gun does not do the COLT. It just goes, wait, that's it. It has a bar right here. As you can see, that shiny little piece right there, that's the bar. The only time that bar stays up to hit the firing pin is when you're holding the trigger down. Bam. The gun was to slip. See it go down? It won't hit that firing pin because it's notched. See how it's notched right here? That's the safety mechanism. So you sit there and do this all day long, it ain't going to fire. You do that with the old model, it's going to go boom. A little bit safer gun nowadays, and of course you can see no walnut grips. Anyway, that's that. So let's get back to the subject at hand, the Black Hawk 44 Magnum. Now, this one was produced in 1957, pretty low serial number. Uh, it's valued, you know, like anything else. It depends on what somebody else paid for it, but I wouldn't sell this gun for nothing in the world. I have harvested deer, hogs, and other critters with this, with, with this gun right here. Absolute tree, true piece of workmanship. And you see the walnut grips. And uh, it's, in, it's in really good shape. Used to be 65 years old. That's, that's pretty good, ain't it? Hmm? You know, you'll notice up here, it just says Storm Ruger, Southport, Connecticut. The newer guns say, See instruction manual for use and all the kind of warnings they have to stick on nowadays is crazy. But this gun was rather significant because the Smith and Wesson, Smith and Wesson Model 29 uh, was rather expensive, especially when it first came out. The average Joe couldn't afford it. <clears throat> but the average Joe could afford the single-action Ruger Blackhawk. This gun, when it originally came out, sold for $60. Of course, sixty dollars was almost a paycheck for somebody back in those days. But anyway, versus two hundred something dollars for the Smith, so so a lot of these were produced over the years, and as time grew on and they got more popular, they made the uh, they call it Super Black Hawk. And the Super Black Hawk basically had a uh, squared off trigger guard and a bigger handle on it for you know. A little more massive hands it tamed the recoil this is a, this gun does when you shoot 44 mags in it it does give you a wallet i'm gonna tell you <clears throat> i like to shoot 44 special with it 
whole lot nicer on the hand and the ears. But thought I'd bring y'all along for this one tonight. <clears throat> uh, 1957 Ruger Black Hawk. 45 Magnum, three screw. Uh, highly sought after collector gun today. You can't hardly find them. If you do, you're going to pay out to yang yang for them. I'm just glad and luckily years ago I got my hands on one and wouldn't trade it for nothing in the world. You see a little difference in the blueing right here? Yeah. That's because the loading gate was aluminum and it just didn't hold the blueing as well. Of course, the back strap is aluminum, but that, that's actually painted. Yeah, it was actually painted. Anyway, Bill Ruger was one of the first people to introduce aluminum in some of his handguns to cut the cost. Nowadays, aluminum is about as expensive as, as the steel. And most things are polymer other than the barrels. But anyway, thought I'd bring y'all along for this and hope you enjoyed it. Uh, and once again, there, there she is. Three Screw Ruger, 1957. Thanks for stopping by. Ed Kirkpatrick. Hope you enjoyed it. This old gun. Bye-bye.